Okay, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for putting me on. Man. Okay, so are you coming? Do you have any questions? Anything specific? Yeah, um, a little bit about about my background. I'm from the UK, uh -huh. yeah, and uh -huh. um, I'm 50 odd years old. So I became uh -huh. a Christian when I was about 20 years old, but brought uh -huh. up in like you know a Christian household. I always struggled with the Trinity, right? That sort of doctrine, which I know was not in the Bible. So after about 11 years, I left. Christianity and um, um, I read lots of other religious books also. I read the Quran, I read it front and back, that's smashed in about I think about a week or so. But I've always been listening to UK Dawa teens, you know. I always, there's not a week goes by where I don't maybe listen to a couple of Muslim preachers online mm -hmm. and uh, I listen to talks. But one thing that I baffles me, I took Shahada as well, right? You can't kick me out because you wouldn't probably class me as Muslim, but I took you hard about 2018, right? Okay. But what I've always struggled with is what I consider to be pre-Islamic practices mm -hmm. still being practiced by, say, Orthodox Sunni Muslims, mm -hmm. i.e. circling the Kaaba, kissing the black stone, throwing stones at the, um, the pillar, you know, in Mecca. And um, I'm not too sure about, you know, what's the two hills which people run between. I know it's to commemorate um, Ishmael's Okay, let's, let's, the I'll, I'll want to save you time and save every, myself yeah. time as well, Carlos. Look, Carlos, yeah. do you believe the Quran is from God? I believe Muhammad is a messenger, yeah. Yeah, so if Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, the Quran is from God, and the, yeah. you believe the Quran is preserved. That's absolutely, that's a historical fact anyways. The Quran okay, is cool. preserved yeah, the yeah. same way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So now we got something now. Uh, Allah, God, mm -hmm. revealed to a messenger yeah. of his, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, alayhi salatu salam, Yeah. A message, i.e. the Qur'an, and he gave him yeah. revelation to teach the people of how to understand the Qur'an and how to practice it. Yeah. Did the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and does Allah in the Qur'an tell us to do hajj, perform pilgrimage? Yes, he did. Is that a command from Allah based on what we just established, that this is Allah's, God's command? If it's given to Muhammad, and Muhammad says, oh, we should do hajj, yes. we do that. Yes. So now, how can I, or any human being, struggle Or, or think that we might know something better than what Allah, the creator of the universe himself revealed, that we know for a fact is his words. Him saying that do pilgrimage or him saying do not do this. So I think if you understand this general rule, Carlos, is that if this is from God, then by default, I cannot argue against something which is from God. Now, when you say these mm. pre-Islamic practices, that you're missing one important thing there. The idea... Okay, Yeah, the idea that Islam was there from the beginning, before Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The idea no, that... I, I understand that. I totally agree with that. Yeah, totally yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm coming I'm coming to a point. The point is, that the first house that was established to the people was the Kaaba. And then the Kaaba was built again. The foundations, Abraham built upon those foundations of the Kaaba. So that place, the Kaaba, was there from the beginning. It's the first house to be established for the people. So it's not like this is a pre-Islamic practices that comes from the pagan Arabs. It's a lot of people confused. It predates the pagan Arabs, predates It's Abraham alayhi salam even because the house is the first house to be built for mankind. So the, the fact that mo the, the, the pagan Arabs used to hold it as a holy place, it's not a pagan practice because the only reason they hold it to be a holy place was because of Abraham. And they had traces of the teach some of the teachings of Abraham. And because Ibra Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham and his son Ishmael are the ones who built the house. And the Arabs come mm -hmm. from the lineage of Ishmael anyways. They used to hold the Kaaba to higher regard. So there was no polytheism in the Arabian Peninsula until one individual called Amr ibn Luhay. He okay. traveled and he got some of the pagan, he saw some of the pagan worshippers uh, worshipping idols. So he went and he brought some of these idols and he was respected in the Arabian Peninsula. So when he brought, he said to the people, look, I found this very good idea. Is this people yeah. who were prostrating to the idols so we can do the same things for us we can make our own idols and prostrate to them and this is how the religion of the arabs were, was changed the prophet ﷺ, he said i saw amr ibn al-hay i saw that person called amr ibn al-hay in hellfire dragging his uh, he's in, being punished in hellfire and then the prophet said Awalu man badda al -Arab. he was the first person to change the religion of the arabs by bringing the idol into the arabian peninsula so the only reason he used to venerate the kaaba was because of Ibra ibrahim ibrahim who is a messenger of god and that yeah, house yeah. yeah and that so house is only This guy introduced the 350 idols into the Kaaba, right? Yeah, the idol worship completely. All this idea of idol worship, he introduced the, f f the idea of self, of worshiping idols. And then gradually they started making more idols. Isaf and Naila, for example, were two idols that he used to worship. But then a story is very funny. It's actually two people who committed fornication in the holy place. Okay. 
They were, right. they, were they, they met night time. <laughs> literally, yeah, the two people who committed, uh, who met night time and committed fornication, and later on when they died, they made idols for them and they made them righteous people and started worshiping them. So it's it's okay. ridiculous of how many uh, quote unquote idols that was introduced later on. What Amr ibn Luhay did, he introduced the idea because they did not have this idea of idol worship in their mind to begin with. He introduced the concept of making an idol and worshiping it, and then all of those idols was were gradually being introduced into the Arabian Peninsula. Okay, so wait a second. So what I've read and where I'm coming from is the Arabia was pagan. Mahan, I mean, Abraham went there or he's not, um, the maiden went there. Arabia was not uh, completely pagan. Arabia okay. had, yeah, yeah, had practices of Abraham, but yes, they were yeah. idol worshippers. They were still pagan, because, worshipping uh, idols. The Most High God was worshipped all over Mesopotamia, right, and all that area, right? But mm -hmm. by different people. So mm -hmm. that was just one God. And then obviously, yeah, he said, the place became corrupted oh, yes. later on. But yes. Islam was always, the worship of the one God was always there. From the right? teachings of Abraham and from the teachings of Ishmael, because they were there in that region. Yeah. So their teachings were still so, there until it was corrupted later. So what about the black stone? I mean, what's that got to do with the one God? I mean, I don't understand it. I see the circling and I'm just uncomfortable with it because coming from a Christian background, uh -huh. you know, there's lots of, um, pagan influence in Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, like the Trinity, you got the crosses, you've yes. got like Easter, you got Christmas, uh -huh. and it's like they can't give it up. So when I, I see, know. you can see the religion, if you study the Bible, you should become, you should leave Christianity, you should lead you away from yeah, Christianity, absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. So I studied it properly, so I left. So, so when I see the black stone and the crowds trying to kiss it and circling, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, Come on, man. This is not nothing to do with the one God. Yeah, so, but again, again, uh, this is the problem now, yeah. Carlos. And that's why I give you the yeah. advice in the in the beginning of our discussion. The problem you have yeah. you have in that understanding, Carlos, is the following is that you're comparing a religion that was corrupted, which means that we yeah. know that the Bible is not preserved. That and therefore it would make sense that there are pagan, purely pagan teachings in there. While oh, when yeah. you have the Quran is completely preserved, which would mean any teaching that we can establish is from the Prophet or from the Quran, we cannot therefore say that this is a pagan teaching. And we cannot have what doubts. What did Muhammad about it. say about it? What did Muhammad say? Kissing the black yeah, stone. Yeah, it's the Prophet right? he said that the stone, the black stone, is a stone from paradise. It's not from earth, and it was white. It was pure. It was my, uh, like the milk. It was Very like the milk, and the sins of mankind. <laughs> sorry, I said that you become black because people kissing it all the time. <laughs> no, no, it's the sins of the people. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that that was like like milk, a stone that is completely white coming from heaven, and then the sins of the people made that stone black. And you had the companion of Prophet ﷺ, Umar ibn Khattab, which was his second closest companion, was the second okay. caliphate of Islam. What did he say? He he said at the black stone is that you're only a hajar, you're only a stone. True, and yes. I know, yeah, and I, I know, yeah, and yeah. I know you do not benefit or harm. Now, where is he bringing this teaching from? He's bringing it from the Prophet ﷺ. He told them clearly that this is just a stone. This is what Umar ibn Khattab said. And if the Prophet ﷺ did not kiss you, I would not have kissed you. This is what Umar ibn Khattab said. So it's not like Muslims believe that that stone is uh, like a pagan holy stone or something like that. They know that this stone, the only reason we do that practice is out of submission to Allah because yeah. the Prophet ﷺ did it. And you can go through the, the uh, you can perform Hajj without kissing the black stone, by the way. It's not a oh, necessity. Cool. Yeah, It's something, no, but, but you shouldn't have an issue with it. But I'm, I'm trying to, to make it clear to you that if it was what yeah. something that Muslims hold so holy, then they would have to do it. You get what I'm trying to say? And they would actually be yeah, yeah. Uh, venerating it. They would not just say you're just a stone. They will actually put it high up and all of that. No, the fact is Islam teaches... Sorry? Have you done it? Done what? Kiss the black stone? I don't... I, yeah. well, I, I believe that time I pointed at the black stone only. So you can point at the black stone if it's too busy, there's people. You don't need to okay. kiss the black stone to perform for your hajj to be complete. And that's the point I want to make to you uh, yeah. is we don't think we were doing the action that this stone is like a, a day so that we know the story. The stone was a stone coming from Jannah and it became black because of the sins of mankind. And the Umar al-Khattab said it's just a, a stone and does not benefit or harm. Allah is the one who benefits and harm. When I do any action, just like washing yeah. my hand and wudu, I get yeah. rewarded because Allah commanded me to do the action. Not the action itself is that which rewards me. So me kissing the stone is a similar thing. The only reason you get a reward is because Allah commanded you to do that thing or the Prophet commanded you to do that, to do that thing or he did it himself. But as I said, mm -hmm. the, re the way you remove this cognitive dissonance that you have is you got to separate yeah. Christianity from Islam. True. Is that Christianity is a, is a religion that's been corrupted, it's been changed, which would make absolute sense then to doubt 
the teachings that are pagan origin that we can establish they have a pagan origin. And that's why you would see if Islam wanted to establish paganism or pagan origin, the first thing the Prophet ﷺ would do is to hold the, the, the idols, elevate them. He's not going to destroy the, the, the idols around the Kaaba. He's not going to say to Anas ibn Malik, for example, if you see any any uh, any idol, break it. If you see any picture, take yeah, it down. Yeah, I, that's, what, that's what always caused me to struggle because I'm thinking he was aggressively single-minded for the one God. And uh, that's what leads me to, because like, I think, okay, if you want to worship the El, the Al, the, the pure one God, then Islam must be the only religion on earth. Allah, yes. So if you want to worship Allah. To yes, yes. His yeah, name is Allah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you want to be a monotheist, you cannot be a monotheist yeah, yeah. today with other religions, you know? Other religions will always introduce something else into monotheism. Islam is the only yeah. pure monotheistic way of life, the only pure monotheistic religion. A person can die without performing hajj and still uh, there is no problem with him as a Muslim. Just because he didn't have yeah. the means. He, either he didn't have the yeah. physical means or the financial means. Allah says you do hajj for those who can do hajj. So that just the fact that, that there's a, 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 a practice of hajj, this is a point I'm trying to make to you, has nothing to do with the pagan teachings. Just because the pagans did it does not make it therefore also pagan. Because you had the pagans worshipping God. Does that mean worshipping God now is a pagan act? They believe that God is the one who gives provision. They believe that God is the one who creates. Does that mean now if I believe that God is the one who creates is a pagan worship? Just because pagans did something does not necessitate that everything they did is therefore a pagan practice. So we can separate some of the pagan practices like worshipping idols and making pictures, idol, all of these things and separate between things which had an actual origin from God. The practice of Abraham alayhi salam, practice of the pilgrimage of the Kaaba and all of that. These are practices that come from an origin it has nothing to do with the pagan practices. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's why Allah says in the Quran, let them worship the Lord of the house. We don't worship the house. We don't worship the Kaaba. Allah says, Let them worship the Lord of the Kaaba. Explicitly clear in the Quran. We're worshiping Allah. The Kaaba is just a direction of prayer that Muslims take to unite upon so we can all have one unity when we perform our congregational prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carlos, makes sense? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I agree, man. I agree. No problem, Carlos. I'll let you go now. It was nice talking to you, yeah, though. Man.